Let's add a custom entity with Gecko Lib 4 in 1.19.4 for Forge. Oh, really big fans of back and shelter once more. In this tutorial, we're going to be adding a Gecko Lib entity here in Forge 1.19.4. Now, for this, we need to do a few things, and that is add Gecko Lib as a dependency to our project. Now we're going to do this in the build.gradle file. And the first thing we actually do need to do is we need to update our Minecraft or the Forge version, basically. We want to go to at least 45.0.8 because that's actually the version that GeckoLib uses. Otherwise, we will have some issues with the data gen later down the line, but that should be the first thing that we need to do. And then the second thing, of course, adding the dependency. Now, how do we add the dependency? Well, for that, we just need to add something in the repositories and something in the dependencies right here. And the something is going to be in the GeckoLib wiki. You can see for Forge 1.19.3, but we can just change the numbers here. That's going to be fine. So the first thing is we want to take this Maven repository right here and add this to the repositories. That is the first step. And then the second step is... We're going to get this thing over here, the implementation, and this one's going to be added right here. Let's say that's fine. And we want to change this to 119.4. This is GeckoLib 4.1.2 is the current version. Let's double check over here. I have this open. There we go. So it's 4.1.2, actually five hours ago. That's absolutely perfect. So there you go. And that should be fine. And then you should have the load Gradle changes in the top right corner. You just hit that or you open the Gradle window and do it manually right here. Reload all Gradle changes and then it builds. And once again, this can take anywhere from a few seconds to a minute or to a little bit longer. Just be patient until this has run through and then we should be fine. Now, well, there we go. Build successful in 28 seconds. Absolutely amazing. And now we have GeckoLib added as a dependency to our mod. Now to make this clear to the users, we also want to go to the meta info in the mods tunnel file and we want to add this as a dependency right here as well just so that we have this so what we can do for example is we can just uh, duplicate this one right here this dependency just making sure that it's properly done and the mod id here in this case is geckolib the range or the actual version that we want to do is 4.1.2 that would be that and then that would pretty much be all that we need we can also delete the comments over here as they aren't necessary and that should pretty much be what we need to do to add the GeckoLib dependency as well. So this would basically just do the following. If we now make a jar file out of our mod and we add it to the mods folder of our Minecraft instance, we were to start Minecraft, then it would say, hey, also add GeckoLib. And if it's not added, then it basically says, hey, you have to add GeckoLib, otherwise this does not work. That's the general idea that we're doing here, right? And then when it comes to the entity, I already have something prepared and that is in Blockbench over here. You can see I have the tiger right now and that is a Blockbench GeckoLib entity. So it's very important that you have the GeckoLib Animations Utils plugin installed right here. Otherwise, this will not work. So install this particular plugin. And then, of course, you need Blockbench as well. And this BB model file, so this Blockbench file will be made available. And then you can also export all of that and basically continue with that. So to export the file, first of all, we just want to go to File, Export, and Export GeckoLib Model. This will save as a geo.json file, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to save this. And then we also want to go to the Animate tab right here, which we can see all of the animations. So you can see this is the walking animation. Then we have an idle animation, and we have a sitting animation. Now we'll only use the walk and the idle animation, but the sitting animation is available to you. So if you want to use that, then you can. To export these, you want to go to Animations, Export Animations. We're just going to select all of them. Say confirm and then save it here as well tiger.animation.json that's absolutely correct and then the last thing we want to do is we also want to save the png over here because that usually is part of the bb model file so what we want to do is just right click and save as and same as here the tiger.png save this and now we have three files the two json files as well as the png file and we're going to add those immediately so in our resources assets tutorial mod folder we want to create a new directory called animations and we want to create another directory called geo now in the animation folder what would go in there well of course the animation.json file there you go let's close this and then the in the geo folder the tiger.geo.json file goes there you go and that will pretty much be all that we need here in the textures folder we're just going to create a new directory called entity and inside of there we'll add the tiger.png and now we have the three files that we've exported from Blockbench added to our project and we can now proceed to actually add the entity itself. I'll try to split this up in a way that you will know, okay, these are specific things for Minecraft and Forge and these are the specific things for GeckoLib. However, it is a little bit intertwined. So we will have, you will have to do this with GeckoLib. There are still some things that you can learn for non-GeckoLib entities as well. First of all, a new package called entity. And then in there, we want a new package called custom and we'll also make a new package called client. So we're going to have three packages. And first of 
available in the entity package itself will make the mod entities class. There you go. And this one has a public static final deferred register of type entity type. This one right here of type question mark or entity underscore types and this is going to be equal to a deferred register dot create forge registries dot entity types comma tutorial mod dot mod id so just a normal deferred register here and then we'll also have a public static void register method with an i event bus as its parameter called event bus and then we're just going to call entity types dot register passing in the event bus. So this is pretty much normal stuff that we've seen with the deferred register previously. So this is nothing too crazy. And of course, all of the code is going to be available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. And now in our tutorial mod class, we want to call mod entities dot register and then passing in the mod event bus over here and now we have this registered as well now we can't actually add the tiger just yet because for this we need the custom class so in the custom package we're going to right click new java class called the tiger entity and this one is going to be very interesting indeed this will extend the animal class right here from net Minecraft world animal and then we're just going to basically do all of this. So this is all from Minecraft itself. We're going to hover over this implement methods. You can see we want the get breed offspring method overridden. That's totally fine. And then hover over again, create constructor matching super. And if the P's over here annoy you, you can just click on it, press shift F6, and then it will basically tell you, okay, let's rename this to something more sensible over here. Or long term, you can also install parchment mappings that would also work. So there's two specific things from Minecraft that we need. That is the overriding the register goals method as well as creating a static method. Now I will be copying over the two methods and then explaining them. Uh, once again, this is all available to you. So we have the set attributes over here. This shouldn't be a monster. This should be an animal over here. And then you can see that we're creating attributes. So the attributes here are actually very important. So you can see we're setting the max health, the attack damage, the speed and the movement speed here for this particular type of entity. And this is incredibly important. So you do need this and we're going to basically assign those in just a moment. And then the goal that is basically the AI, right? What does your mob do the entire time while it is basically just running around in the world? And the first thing is a float goal. So this literally just is that if it if your mob is inside of the water, it doesn't sink to the bottom and drown. That's literally the only thing that happens here with the, this goal. And you can see there's two different selectors. There's a goal selector and a target selector. The general idea is that the goal selector, you basically add goals to it with a different priority, right? So these numbers are priorities. The lower their number, the higher the priority. So the first thing, regardless of whatever anything happens, the first thing that this entity will do is it will float. There's, you know, it can maybe have an attack, all of that, but it will first of all float, and then it will attack, and then it will avoid water while randomly strolling, and then it will randomly look around. That is the general idea. When it comes to attacking, it can, of course, only attack if it has a target, right? This is what the target selector over here does. Basically, we're saying, hey, get the nearest attackable target, and we're then adding this to the target selector. And the way that this works is we're passing in a different class. So the first thing that we want to do is, hey, if there's a player around, attack the player. If there's no player around, then we're going to search for an abstract villager. If there's no abstract villager, then we're going to attack an iron golem. And if there's no iron golem, then we will attack a creeper. That is the general idea here for those goals. Uh, the goals can be quite complicated and you need some sufficient Java knowledge to completely understand everything. But if you do have that, then you can middle mouse button click on this and look at this goal class. So just click on the goal class, press control H, and then you will see all of the different goals that are available to you here from Minecraft itself. And they illuminate a lot of things on how basically the AI of mobs work. So I can just recommend if you have sufficient Java knowledge to go in there and look at that as well. The breed offspring we will of course also create. However, I will make a deliberate error right here because we first of all have to register our tiger in the mod entities class for the, us to do this basically. And then we can proceed with that. So to register our tiger, we want to do a public static final registry object of type entity type of type tiger entity and this is going to be our tiger this is going to be equal to entity types dot register passing in a new string here called tiger and then making a supplier of entity type dot builder dot of passing in tiger entity colon colon new mob category dot creature that's what i want to do yes and then after the first closing parentheses we want to do dot sized this is going to determine the hitbox size so i'm going to do 1.5 and 1.75 there you go and after the first closing parentheses again dot build 
passing in a new resource location, tutorial mod mod ID, and then tiger, and then after the first closing parentheses to string, and then at the very end over here, ending it with a semicolon. And that should, there you go. The only error here is the new, and that is gonna be fixed very easily because right now the tiger entity constructor is protected, but we wanna make it public and then this error should go away. There you go. Absolutely splendid. And then in the get offspring method over here, we could say mod entities dot tiger dot get dot create and then passing in the level parameter here and there you go. This is basically always the stuff that you will need to do for your custom entities, whether or not they're GeckoLib or not. However, the next point of order is going to be setting the attributes. Now to set the attributes, we actually need to use an event. So for this, in the tutorial mod package, we're gonna right click new package called event. And inside of there, we're gonna make a new Java class called the mod events class. So I'm not going to go into details about events in this 119.3 series. I've talked about them previously. Generally speaking, there are certain events that fire to do certain things at certain times. And in this case, what we want to do is above the class, we want to say add a mod and then hit the tab key to autocomplete, delete the parentheses dot event bus subscriber, add parentheses again, mod ID. And you can see it basically suggests this to us. So you can hit the tab key to autocomplete passing in tutorial mod mod ID, comma, bus is equal to mod dot event bus subscriber dot bus dot mod. Very important that this is done correctly. Once again, the code is all available to you. And then we want to add a public static void entity attribute event. And this will have the entity attribute creation event called event over here. And then this will have event dot put mod entities dot tiger dot get tiger entity dot set attributes there you go and then also incredibly important add subscribe event added above the particular method this is the way that this should look and that's very important that this is done correctly otherwise when you spawn your tiger or your entity then the game will crash and it says i don't have any attributes so this is absolutely needed right and those are basically all of the steps for the custom entity inside of minecraft now of course if, even if you would spawn it it would not work because you don't have any way to tell the game right now how does it look like right how does the tiger look like you would still need a model for that and you also would need a render for that now in this case we're going to of course use GeckoLib for that. So first things first, inside of the Tiger entity, we're going to implement the Geo entity interface right here. And we'll hover over this implement methods. You can see there's two methods that we have to implement, the get animatable instance cache method and the register controllers method. Now the animatable instance cache method is absolutely easy to do. And for that, we literally just need to add a private animatable instance cache field over here, call it cache. And this is going to be equal to a new single animatable instance cache passing in this over here. And then we can just return the cache right there. And that is this method dealt with. And then the other method, the register controller method is a little more complicated, but also not too bad. So we want to take the controller registrar there from the parameter. We want to add a new animation controller right here passing in this and then a new string called controller. This is just the name of the controller. Th zero for the transition ticks. And then we want to say this colon colon predicate. Now predicate is going to be red because this method has not been created yet. However, we can hover over it and create that method called predicate and it will have the exact correct method signature that we need. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy over the contents of this, but it is it should be very, very straightforward. So the general idea is that, first of all, this is T animation state, not animation state. That's totally fine. There you go. And, however, the contents of it should be fairly straightforward. So first of all, we're saying, hey, if the animation state is that we're moving, right? So if the entity is moving, then what we want to do is we want to set the current animation of the controller to be animation.tiger.walk. That is all that we're doing here. And then we just want to continue. Now, if this is, of course, not the case. Then we're just setting it to idle. So we're either in the walk animation or in the idle animation. The animation names right here, of course, come from Blockbench itself in the animate right here. So this is animation.tiger.walk and animation.tiger.idle, right? So that should be fairly self-explanatory. And that is pretty much always how the predicate is going to look like. Now, if you have more complicated animations, then, of course, it will be more complicated. But for the time being, this is just an introduction into this. This should pretty much suffice. And that is is actually the entire tiger entity class done in this case. That is all that we need. And we can now proceed to add the renderer and the model. So in the client package, we're going to right click new Java class called tiger model. And then we're going to go in here again and add the tiger renderer as well. There you go. Now we're going to start with the model because that is the easier one of the two. We're going to extend the geo model 
of type tiger entity. There you go. Import this with alt and enter. Hover over this implement the three methods. And you can see it is the get model resource, the get texture resource, and the get animation resource methods. And literally this is just a new resource location with tutorial mod.mod ID. And then this points to the JSON files that we have down here. So this is going to be geo slash tiger dot geo dot JSON. And then we can just copy this over and replace those two. And then this is going to be the textures slash entity tiger.png. Very important that this is all written correctly. And you have the file endings here as well. And this is going to be animations slash tiger.animation.json as well. There you go. And that's almost all that we need. We also want to override the set custom animations method over here. And we want to add this. So I just basically prepared this already. This is of course also going to be available to you. And this basically just makes it so that the head rotates as well. Now it's incredibly important, right? When the head rotates, right? So basically we, you know, the player goes to the actual entity and their head will rotate towards them. For example, the head right here, right? The bone name head has to actually exist right here. So you can see that my head right here, right, this is the entire head, this is going to rotate, right? So if I were to just like change the rotation, you can see this is what rotate inside of the game as well. And it has to be named exactly the same as is specified right here. So do keep that in mind. If you have a custom entity, then that has to be named the same. Otherwise, as you can see, it would be null and then it wouldn't work. That's the general idea. But once we have the tiger model over here done, we can go to the renderer and the renderer will extend the geo entity renderer of type tiger entity. Here in this case, we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. We want to remove the geo model from the parameters and we want to just say new tiger model right here. And then we also want to override the get texture location method. I am unsure if this is 100% needed. However, I do always do it just in case. And we can basically just give the same resource location as we've done in the model. And we also want to override the render method. So there's going to be this one right here. It has a lot of different parameters. And the reason why we want to override the render method is because when we have a baby, we want this, of course, to be smaller, right? So we're going to say if entity dot is baby, then we want to scale this down. And the way we scale this down is we use the pose stack dot scale. And we are just going to say 0.4. 0.4 and 0.4 F. There you go. So we're going to basically make it 40% the size of the normal tiger. Uh, now you can, of course, play around with this. Do be aware that if you, you know, change this to like eight or something like that, and the other point to point 0.4, then it's going to be a little bit stretched. It's going to look a little bit weird. So I basically always suggest having all three of those the same uh, scaling. But, you know, of course, you could play around with this however you would like. And now when it comes to the renderer, we want to go to the tutorial mode class and we have down here the on client setup event and right there we want to, well, set up the renderer. So this is going to be entity renderers with an S at the end, right there, dot register mod entities dot tiger dot get tiger renderer colon colon new. There you go. And that basically, well, just registers the particular renderer to your mod entity and that will ensure that everything basically works fine. Now, last but not least, we also want to add an item that is going to be the spawn egg. Now, in this case, the actual tiger entity has been fully added. So we have the renderer, we have the model, we have the events, the, the basically the attributes that are set and the tiger entity is done. However, we want to add the actual we want to add the spawn egg, so we're just going to copy this over and we're going to say this is the tiger underscore spawn underscore egg and the name here as well, tiger underscore spawn underscore egg. And this is a forge spawn egg item, very important. First parameter being mod entities dot tiger. Then the second one is the background color. Now I've already have this. This is going to be 0xd57e36. This is just in hex code in this case. And then the second one is 1do D00, there you go. And that would be the actual tiger spawn egg. Now for this, we of course also need a item model in this case, and it is a special item model. For that, we're going to go, of course, to our data gen and in the item model provider over here, we're going to add this and this is going to be the with existing parent. The first one is the mod items dot tiger spawn egg dot get, nope, it's actually get ID dot get path. And then the second one is MC lock with item slash template underscore spawn underscore egg. And there we go. And then the first thing that we can do is we can run data over here and it should add our tiger spawn egg uh, model item model here into our game, into the generated folder. 
and then we have everything done except for the except for the lang but we can do that as well so that's actually very very easily doable right this is just going to be the tiger underscore spawn underscore egg and then here right the same all right there we go all providers took however many milliseconds absolutely exactly what we want to see and then in the assets models item we should find a tiger spawn and you can see it is a very very complicated item model because not at all however it still makes sense right because now if you get another one you're, you can just duplicate this change the mod item there and then you're going to be fine but those are actually all of the steps that we need to take to add our actual gecko lip 4 entity into our game so i guess let's go into the game and see if it works all right so i find ourselves in minecraft again and let's just see of course we haven't added the of course the big blunder i have not added the actual spawn egg to the creative mode tab but i guess we can just give it to ourselves that's gonna be fine as well so there's gonna be tutorial mod and that's gonna be the tiger spawn egg there you go so that did work absolutely no worries and if i right click there you go we got a tiger over here and you can see it is animated so this is the idle animation and this is the walking animation you can see it it, it looks a little bit wonky but that is totally fine and we can even spawn some babies over here there they are all around so absolutely spectacularly awesome adding the tiger egg of course is absolutely no issue at all we just say mod items dot tiger egg spawn egg over here and then that's it right that's just added it's not that difficult all right that's gonna be for this tutorial right here next time we'll spawn the entity inside of the world hope to see you there so yeah